Welcome to a spot interview of NeverEndingPanel.com with a special guest author, Harry Turtledove, often called the Grand Master of Alternate History, credited for bringing alternate history into the mainstream. Um, Harry Turtledove is a Hugo Award winner, two-time Sideways Award winner, Prometheus Award winner, and up for the Prometheus Award with not one but two books this year, which is, as far as I understand, a first in Prometheus history. Um, and with me is my brother, fellow Duberhead and co-founder, Aton Collin, and of course, Sam Mantin helping us out on this. And Mr. Turtledove. Sir. What are you working on? What's going on? Well, I am just back to L.A. from a trip to Yellowstone National Park, which worked out very well because it was in conjunction with my guest of honor gig at MISCON over Memorial Day weekend. And I have a deal with NAL Rock to write a series of novels on what might happen if the super volcano Sitting <laughs> under Yellowstone Yay. goes up again. Something, something else to keep hey. me up at night. Hey, we don't have to worry about that. It goes up once every six hundred thousand years, and it went up six hundred thousand years ago. ago. So, hey, what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> so is that what you're working? So That's obviously what, you went there for research. I went there for I went there for research. I I hate travel that I get to write off my taxes. It's just such oh, a so play. terrible. But how many times can you write a book which basically says we're screwed, we're screwed, we're screwed, we're screwed, we're screwed? Well, you know, Doctor Purnell said what? they're making a good living doing that. <laughs> um, do you, other than going to you know uh, Yellowstone, uh, you know, what other stuff do you do research into? Like uh, other famous. Um, End of the Earth uh, you, scenarios. You, you do research into other major volcanic eruptions. You uh -huh. do research into what the Yellowstone supervolcano did the last three times it went off, which is basically create Yellowstone. You know, I mean, if or the one that went off seventy-four thousand years ago yeah, that almost extinguished yes. the human race. Indeed, you know, I mean, if, you know, if you want to imagine what this will be like, take Rhode Island. Send oh, fire and smoke up around the edges for a day or so, then drop it straight down half a mile onto red hot rock. Whoa. Then look at all the pretty stuff that comes up from it. And remember, you know, the multiply what happened with the Iceland volcano by I don't know, Building. a thousand okay, but something. Yeah, some some somewhere somewhere between three and nine orders of magnitude. So presumably it's not a disaster film slash book, it, you, that becomes the catalyst for no, no, no. you messing stuff the way, the up way afterwards? It, in other words, the now sociology, society changes, what, what, what's your what's your jump off from the disaster? The way it was explained to me. Can I have, oh, I'm sorry, um, I asked a silly question. Society changes, weather changes, politics change uh -huh. massively. Aha! Uh -huh. That was the question. Uh, for one thing, most of the red states get wiped off the map. Hmm. I mean, literally wiped off the map. Um, for another thing, we are no longer the breadbasket of the world because we just got kicked in the breadbasket. <laughs> uh, for another thing, and the really ugly thing is that the Ayatollahs get to laugh at what happened to the great Satan. Right. We told you! <laughs> Nobody listened! So I think with our limited time left, Aton, you had a question you wanted to throw it towards Harry. Actually, yeah. I've been I love your new series, one where World War II starts a year early. Oh, thank you. Uh, just, I find that the second, the second one from that comes out next month. Woohoo! See, that's uh, what you're supposed to do. Second one comes out next month, and it's called? West and East. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Or the the question is, I noticed that the Poles are now hilariously on the side of the Germans. What does that do to the whole ultra thing? It screws it to the wall. Wait, explain for us uh, ignorant uh, the ultra. Uh, basically, right before the Poles got wiped out, unbeknownst, a lot of people don't know this, it was the Poles who cracked Ultra. Uh, sorry, which cracked the. Well, actually, um, they got an Ultra machine off, they got an ultra off machine a German off machine, a German ship that sank in shallow water. They figured out how it worked. They actually were doing the initial decoding. Explain to people who don't know what Ultra is. The, Ger the British With were reading. 40 seconds left. The British were reading the German military codes all through World War II, essentially from like 1940 on. They knew what the Germans were going to do before they did it. Most of the time, not all. Except for that old divulge when the Germans actually didn't use Ultra uh, at all. So the British had this huge, massive advantage, even sacrificed the city to maintain it. And according to the scenario you just created, that, that don't happen. happen. That don't happen, which means World War II gets a lot tougher for... <coughs> and speaking of not happening, time is not happening for us. So we're going to wrap up the spot interview with Harry Turtledove. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you, Dan. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. Nice to meet you. Thank you.